Hansen and John Gibbons inside Singapore's National Stadium, where Liverpool... Oh, we've got a ball, we've got a ball. That's so exciting. You should have seen Craig behind the camera. He came alive. There hasn't been a ball yet. Craig, just sort the ball out and knock it over for the boys. Excellent stuff. I mean, they've got other balls. Yeah, they've got a lot of balls. There's, there's fellas who seemingly just do nothing but drag ball, bags of balls around uh, in amongst all of this. That's proof. This is not superimposed. Uh, it was actually almost 3D there, John. Uh, this is my only concern with standing here, is a comedy moment if one of us gets absolutely hit by the ball. And if that happens, Hanno will die of laughter. Yeah, Hanno's facing the right way, so he's got the upper hand in this situation. And yet he's absolutely desperate to want to me and you uh, get creamed by a football. He's, he's thinking of the numbers already. Or maybe the 250 quid off you've been framed. Well, but that has stayed there, by the way. Is it <laughs> inflation busting it is? Yeah, there's not, there's not anything about the cost of living crisis. Uh, <laughs> you've been framed, unfortunately. Uh, not done anything about it at all. We are here in Singapore. Liverpool are training behind. Uh, it looks like someone might just slot uh, no he's missed it uh, and that's how dangerous we are that might have come into shot Hannon's desperate to go and get the ball by the way so we can kick it back to the, the football he's like a kid you should see his face behind the camera it is absolutely bristling it's obviously a pleasure to be here you know to be part of all of this Singapore numbers uh, have turned out again not quite as many as in Bangkok I'd say although it might be that it's framed around a different part of the stadium uh, it is also a working day here in Singapore and we were informed last night that people work late in Singapore so it may well be connected to that all of that said there is a game uh, tomorrow night John up against Crystal Palace and we know pre-season is pre-season I'm not really into the idea of Liverpool though falling into the habit of, of shipping significant numbers of goals over and over again against sides we're going to have to play during the season it is only pre-season we know that but it would be nice tomorrow night to firstly see Liverpool score and maybe not ship four yeah I mean, there's no panic. Well, there shouldn't be any panic, um, for, for, what happened, be any panic. for what happened against, <laughs> against Manchester United. But, you know, they need to, you know, get, get their act together eventually in this pre-season. It's meant to be a build-up uh, to that game on the Fulham. So if it's sooner rather than later and they look, you know, a bit a bit sharper again, which you expect them to as, as pre-season goes, but also a bit sort of less sloppy. And listen, that was the story from Manchester United. It really, really wasn't. A lot of the play was was good. Uh, there was just some, some sloppy defending that was that was punished and does get punished when, you, when you're when you up against uh, good players. Uh, Crystal Palace haven't quite got the attacking quality uh, of, of Manchester United. But, you, but you know, let's not find out. Uh, let's not make the mistake. So, so that's what we're hoping for tomorrow. And like you've said uh, a few times on this content since we've been here, you know, you want to give these passionate voices a passionate fans, sorry, a bit more to shout about, and you know, everyone we've spoken to in Singapore is, is so excited about the game. And you want to give them a little pull away and a few goals. Listen, the cheering Bobby Firmino goals in training uh, at the moment, um, so they'll go sick well, if they get a real one tomorrow. On Bobby Firmino, so uh, Jota's got an injury that feels like yeah, it feels like Allison's is a precaution. Jota's, from the way it's been talked about, sounds like it could be an injury. I was sort of looking forward to Jota at the start of the season. Uh, he started last season really, really sharply. That said, in the training session that we've just watched part of, and in the training session we saw the other night, I thought of the attackers. Firmino looked the sharpest. Um, and it may well be that there's a lot of people who are desperate when people are picking 11s to not find a place for Roberto Firmino. But today when we were doing an event in the Liverpool shop, they had the highlights of the autumn going into the winter of 1920 when we were in the league. And Firmino is at the centre of so much that that's good, that, that ends up in a goal or ends up in a great save, that ends up in something that's strong enough to be on the end of season compilation. Firmino was doing so much of it and it just, it just clicked in my head going, I'd love to see, I'd love to see one last, if it is last, but I'd love to see a three month say of Roberto Firmino where you just can't keep him out the action. Yeah, and listen, we could do, and you know, the manager's certainly not writing him off, and his teammates won't be. He's become a bit forgotten. I think I've probably guilty, been guilty of describing him as the Every, fifth forward now. Everyone's picking an eleven, and everyone's yeah. saying he's the fifth of five, and yeah, all that sort yeah, of stuff. But, but with Jota out, he's not going to be there. I mean, on Jota, it's a real shame for him. He looks like, you know, if we're speaking to people here, he's aggravated the, the, the hamstring injury. The, the forty was over, and so he got picked up the hamstring injury. Uh, playing international football, he, he, he trained last night, and then as a sort of aggravated. So it's a real shame for him. I would say Neil, and because I'm like you, I want to see him absolutely fly into the season. Partly because it takes the pressure off Darwin a little bit. And I know um, you mentioned the James the interview he did, Klopp did with James Pierce, where he said, well, you know, we, we don't want to feel like we have to rush him. You know, he might be there game one or he might be game three or even game five, you know, when he gets his sort of start or whatever. They've signed him for six years. He's got a six-year contract. It's a long I mean? time. It's but, a lot of years. So 
so they want to be patient with him if they need be. And listen, Jurgen Klopp's proved that it's 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 old player dependence, isn't it? There's someone like Luis Diaz who's, who's, yeah. who's signing cup finals, you know, in his second one for the club. And then there's others uh, like, like Costa Shamikas. Or Fabinho is a yeah, good one. Yeah, well, I was going to say Costa Shamikas because we interviewed him today, so he's <laughs> in my mind. Um, I'm going to give him a wave later. He's just over there. Uh, my mate Costas, over the swap round. Um, they swap round, they're different lads. Uh, that threw me. Um, Mo Salah and the boys just behind me there now. Um, yeah, there's Klopp Mo Salah. There them, yeah. um, we had a little chat with before as well, but not very much not recorded. Uh, me and Craig just um, ended up in very close proximity to him and lost our heads uh, because, you know, we fucking love Liverpool players uh, and I don't make any apology for that. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Diego Jota. Yeah, so basically, Diego Jota, if it's a firing, Diego Jota takes the pressure off even more on Darwin. You know, they're able to, to say to him, listen, don't worry about it. You've come in to be one of five, six strikers. You know, if, if you have to sort of take your time with you, then, then that's sort of fine, really, whereas... You know, suddenly an injury to one of the others, and well, well I mean, Nunes is starting first game, whether we like it or not, and so that's 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 the that's the shame. It's a shame for Diogo um, because we all love him, uh, but it's, a, it's it's also you know puts a slight spanner in the in the Darwin works as well. It does indeed. Uh, it absolutely does. With reference to the Palace game, you're expecting it to be three thirties again, um, or do you think he may well he may well have a few more to do forty five and forty five? Yeah, it'll be it will be interesting. I think I think what he'll do is go three thirties again. So what we're seeing behind us is three teams effectively. So on the far pitch. Um, and have a look at our social because Craig's doing loads of filming uh, that'll be sort of on there but you might be able to see in the back of here as well um, on the far pitch you've got a, a more of a traditional game so it's 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 11 v 11 or, or two teams pieces as well. play, playing against each other um, and then there's a third team here who are effectively playing against no one and that poor goalkeeper uh, over there uh, is up against 11 lads who are really good at football and so that's what's happening and so this this game's a little bit more you know about passages of play and finding each other and switching and things like that where they're not playing against anyone and then you've got a sort of of, uh, uh, you know, a, a second pitch over there, which is two teams playing on that. So they're very much split into three teams here, which makes suggests to me um, that, that that that's what they'll do. I also think with Jurgen, when he brings all these lads out, like he has, he does it for a reason. Yeah. Like it's not just, you know, I mean, it, it's partly about giving them experience and stuff like that, and it's partly around nearly. Um, it's it's partly around the, the fact that you know well, there's a contingency if if you do like Jota does, you know, aggravates the hamstring a little bit. But I think also he's like, well, here they're playing. Do you know what I mean? And if because he sent people home early from these things where, where yeah. they haven't necessarily been needed, and so I think his idea is going to be using all all of the players, you know, as many as possible of them. So I think you'll go three three again. The only thing I might I think I might do a little bit differently is maybe not save all the cavalry till right at the end. That he might so he might mix it up, may maybe spread the best players out a little bit more. I mean, look, that's a. That's a matter of opinion who the best players are, of course. But but I think it's undoubtedly that the third team was sort of much stronger than the other two. So um, Save. so you know you might you might see a little bit more of the of the mixed up, or you might see them go so so strong early and look to to maybe do what Manchester United did to us. Um, I think there 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 is options, you know. But but I do think he will go for three thirty. It's just he might might look at it in a slightly different way. mentioned before Kostas Shimakas you interviewed him earlier today how was he yeah I, I really enjoyed it he was good I could tell he was really looking forward to it he sort of bounced into the room uh, to see us like you've been told like oh these lads are all right basically or this is fan media I mean I hope so um, or you know uh, yes he was like he was like all right you know he was like real coming to see the Scousers uh, vibe which I really liked and so yeah he was great a uh, nice one to Liverpool for not just on our that interview but, but everything they've, they've supported with us with us on this trip it is really appreciated and I think they felt the cost is a big good fit, fit for us because he has such good fun and they were right yeah we did 25 minutes um, so it was interesting because we talked a lot about um, his first two seasons at Liverpool and how different they were and, and, he, and, he, and he answered the questions really well but he kept wanting to talk about next season he kept wanting to talk about next season that was quite an interesting thing really because you know, it just shows how focused they all are on how many trophies that there are available to win next year and how they want to go go better. So you want to talk about last season, he just wanted to talk about the one coming. Basically, yeah. Apart from the FA Cup final, he was all right with talking about that. <laughs> um, he was he was he was he was he was really good on that and sound about that, but 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 yeah, yeah. That first season when he kept getting injured a lot. Why are you bringing that up, John? Yeah, please um, stop. Second season where 
yeah, we went really well in the league, but ultimately didn't win it. I don't really want to talk about that either, John. I'm going to talk about the fact that we're going to win the league next year, please. I mean, that is the spirit. Um, <laughs> maybe we can all do that I think, from now I, on. Think, I think he came out of it thinking, this lad's not focused enough on next season. And has maybe gone another way with Jürgen and said, like, you know, these meetings we're having, these pricks need to come. We, we need to get something in there <laughs> where they're going to switch on and focus on it completely. Listen, it was an absolute pleasure to get to interview Costas. As John says, here right now is a clip from it. Uh, we'll be back in a little while. I've got a big, I've got a big uh, quandary for when we come back in that, should I or should I take the specs off? Do you know, I've got the, I've, the, sun, the, the, the sunglasses, aren't they? I mean, because for continuity, that's what you're meant to do, keep them on now. But I've just realised I am inside, de facto. I feel like one of those fellows who wears his sunglasses inside. I think, I think either way you'll be all right. Do you think, think, as I long think... as the viewers are all right. So there might not be continuity when we come back. That, that, that's what I'm trying to say to them. There might not be continuity. But there is definitely Costas Shimakas. It was some celebration. You know, we were in the stands in Wembley and... You know, you guys come over and it, it's like you guys all want to celebrate with us all together, really, you know, rather than like in your huddle with the team who've won it. The first thought is always, yeah, let's do this together. You know, the, the DJ plays one kiss and then it's let's go for all of us. Yeah, yeah, this is so... Uh, this one kiss also gives you like a uh, uh, motivation, you know, <laughs> to celebrate more. Of course, me also, I climb to the back of Adrian. <laughs> of course, it was, it was mad. Uh, what we what to leave the, there? Uh, hopefully next next season we we'll live again. Yeah. Uh, this kind of uh, this kind of things. I think uh, the team is gonna be 100% ready for for all these tough challenges we will have in the future. Uh, we'll be 100% focused. I'm I'm 100% sure for, about that, and we will see. Yeah, Fabio, Fabio, come on. Yeah. <laughs> double team, double team. <laughs> you have to give it to these, I don't feel draft. <laughs> it's right. I mean, you get a bit of understanding on the pitch. We saw that in uh, the training um, in Bangkok. Are you enjoying playing with each other? Are you welcoming them into the club? Of course, you know, we've seen what he uh, can do and stuff. You know, um, great player. So, you know, he's coming to the team, he's fitted in well. Um, so, yeah. The connect on well. Yeah. Curtis has been um, very good to me, like on and off the pitch. Like, he's helped me so much. So. Um, all credit to him, and uh, he's just fun to play with. And when you're having fun, that's when our best football comes out. So, yeah. And just quickly, Jürgen's come out and backed you. He said, like, we don't need another midfielder. What are you talking about? We mentioned you guys. You know, he's yeah, right to back you, isn't he? We've got to do of course. Pass for the entire that's squad. what we have to say, yeah. Of and course. so we should. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, on, yeah. See you later. James, another intense training session in the heat. Um, how are you finding How are you finding out here generally? Yes. Yeah, Pretty much used to it now, aren't we? Going to warm climates this time of year, putting the work in. You know, you've got to look at it, it's a bonus. Whatever work you're doing out here is worth more than you'd be doing at home, even though it's obviously quite warm at home, I'm hearing. So, um, yeah, the conditions are obviously tough, but, um, you know, you're going to get more out of it. The 30 minute games you did the other night and again might be tomorrow, uh, we'll wait and see. How are they for you to play and is it a case of just going as hard as you can for those short periods? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously for us as well, my, my 30, it was like 15 15 split. So yeah. you, you, you had to and could go as hard as you could really for the, for the 30. It's not always easy, obviously, the first game, changing direction at that intensity, obviously sprinting probably quicker than you would in training as well. So it's obviously what we need. It's, it's about getting those uh, reps in, getting the high speed in, and, and um, obviously those actions have changed direction. And just finally, the, the support out here, we've just been to Bangkok and, and now in Singapore. It is unreal, anyway, it surprises me again each, each time, and it shouldn't do really, but it's just the passion that we've got for our club is, is insane. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, uh, you know, you go anywhere in the world with Liverpool and you can see what a massive club it is, you know, the following we have, we're lucky enough to have, and obviously we're lucky enough to play in front of the fans at Liverpool every week, but you don't realise how many people are supporting you all over the globe as well, watching the games until you come out. So it's great to see them, you know, the support they give us from afar and, you know, see them and, and, and um, you know, hopefully renew their faith in us and, and their energy. We can feed off that, but also hopefully gain a few new fans while we're here as well. Yeah, well, go well tomorrow. Look forward Cheers. to watching. Cheers. Bit of bonus stuff there from the mix zone. Well, in you love mix zones, don't you? Come alive in them. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think I'm fairly alive at the best of times, Neil, to be honest with you. I've got a high, high live, um, constant. Yeah, and I enjoy it. I just love footballers, to be honest with you. And I like the fact that they, they know a little bit about us now, you know, just have to say, care, you know, with Cal Valley, you've got to talk to the Ampere Raff and all that. It's fun, isn't it? You didn't have loads of time tonight, I think it is fair to no, say. No, they just but... whisked off so many of them really, really quickly. That's the way in which it goes sometimes. Uh, you're looking forward to tomorrow, being good. Yeah. I like this 
stadium, by the way? Yeah, stadium's great. Uh, fans are passionate and it should be really good uh, tomorrow night. Hopefully they'll see a Liverpool win, like we said before. And yeah, you just want to see them, them push on each time. Jordan pre-season, don't you? And so hopefully the, tomorrow's another sign of that. Marvel stuff. Uh, just to be really, really clear, that's been talking Reds. Neil Atkinson, John Gibbons, Costas, Jimmy Kurt Jones, uh, Fabio Carvalho and James Milner. I tell you what, you get the hits.